Good morning. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, place the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captives of sin and cannot protect ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, we live with us, and we lead us. So that I can be like my will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen.
And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. 
a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and, our, our, uh, and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Holy Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Uh, 
I wanted to share a story with you today that comes from my family's life. It is about my grandmother, Clara Marie Kohlberg Christensen. One name, very Swedish, and the married name, quite Danish. My grandmother grew up in a Christian family. Her grandparents were responsible for the founding of the church where I grew up. She was born in, 19, or in uh, 1893, and um, I had the good luck of having her in my life until I turned almost 30. So it was, it was really nice to, to have her around that long. Um, my grandmother had a habit in her life, and her life had not been easy. For one thing, if my mother were still here, she would tell you about the wintertime trips up the steps from the garage to the outhouse on the hill above the house. And they lived in town, folks, not outside of the town. She may do with what most of us today would consider pretty primitive things. She cooked a meal for 27 or 28 people at Thanksgiving on a wood-fired stove where she would get up really early in the morning, get the oven heated up, set the fire going, and then she would prepare an entire Thanksgiving meal for the whole family. And periodically over the years, some of us kids got to be there with her to, to see all of that happen. Her husband, John, well, let's, let's put it this way. He was a melancholy Danish Swede. Not the easiest guy in the world, but a pretty good provider. He was fortunate during the Depression to have a job with the city. And my mother said they always had a car, even though it had drop curtains and no windows in the wintertime, and it would be icy cold, but at least they didn't have to walk through the snow to get where they were going. And every Sunday, the place they went, but my grandfather never went, was church. He made sure they got there. And later in life, my grandmother's children, my mother and her sister and her brothers, would be sure that Clara got to church almost every week that she felt up to it. I can thank Clara for the bad knees. She had the worst knees in the world, and they weren't doing knee replacements in the 50s and 60s. They built a ramp for her so she didn't have to climb steps from the house. And she made it on Sundays, and she sat in the very same spot and same pew. Does that sound familiar, folks? Every week. And her family surrounded her, except for my Uncle Jack, who had become Roman Catholic. He never went to church there either. And my Uncle Bob, who rarely came to church, and my Uncle Frank, who very rarely came to church, but his wife, my Aunt Waldina, did. Uh, somehow the boys picked up their dad's attitude towards church. But my mother and my Aunt Marguerite uh, attended church every week. When my grandmother died, and I was not aware of this, and when my mother went up to the house uh, to go through my grandmother's things, uh, even before the funeral took place, um, on her nightstand she found my grandmother's little tattered Bible. And my grandmother read every night before she went to bed, went to sleep. And every night she read the 130th Psalm. It was, the page to the 130th Psalm was shredded because she would close her Bible and then open it back up and find the Psalm every night. Um, and I suspect for a lot of her life, I don't know if it was her confirmation Bible or not, but it certainly was one that she had used a lot. The pastor who was at the Lutheran church where I grew up, that was a part of my grandmother's life and her, grand, and her parents and her great-grandparents who founded the church, took that 130th Psalm and preached her funeral service sermon from it. Life wasn't easy, 
Grandma went through the Depression. There was resources, but not much. John died when I was seven, my grandfather. He had pancreatic cancer. So she was on her own for a long time. And Medicare didn't hit until 64, I think. I think that's about right. So she had a number of years without any medical coverage of any kind. And her health wasn't always good. She had her first heart attack in her 50s. She had worked a long, hard life. But every night she came to the 130th Psalm and that was her way to find calm and power in her relationship with God through Jesus Christ. She didn't have a fancy house. In fact, after my grandfather died and my, her sister Esther's husband died, they moved in together into Esther's house and my Aunt Vera, their youngest sister who had had stunted growth because she had had rheumatic fever, scarlet fever when she was young. And she was very slow at everything that she did. She would, to, to butter a piece of toast, you have never seen such fastidiousness about buttering a piece of toast. Every, every crumb had to be covered with butter. That was Vera. And she moved that way as she walked. She did everything in her life that way except mathematics. She was a savant in math. You could give her eight or ten numbers wide and twenty columns deep and she could have the answer for you in about ten seconds. She had a real gift like that that had survived. But she never was able to work because of the way, the speed in which she lived her life. And so she stayed with Esther and stayed with my grandmother. And when the two of them moved in together, and she stayed with my Uncle Fred and his wife. Um, so when all of that stopped happening for her, she moved in with my grandmother and her, her, her two sisters, Esther and Clara. Esther died and Grandma kept the house to live in. And she stayed there until her death, continuing to take care of Vera, because Vera had no place else to go. As I said, her, her possessions were meager. Even though we would gather there for Christmas, somehow that got to be the habit. It's kind of like our family is with us. They all come to our house for Thanksgiving and Christmas, and for Father's Day and Mother's Day and any other major holidays, um, the entire family shows up at our house, grandchildren and children, and friends. Um, and somehow we make that work. I've been telling the kids lately that a dinner that cost me $300 to serve them on a Sunday, because there are 30 of them, is a little much for us at this point in our life. So now they've started helping out and bringing food in. Grandma loved the 130th Psalm. I am confident in her life at the time of Johnny's death, at the time of the death of my great-grandfather with whom I shared a common birthday, that there were times when she was crying out in her soul. I know her life wasn't easy, her health wasn't particularly good. Um, she prayed every night, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. How often have you asked God to please listen to you? My grandmother did it every night. And not with, with much improvement in anything, but she prayed for her kids. She prayed for people she felt were not good people. Her answer for my Uncle Jack, who had the most foul mouth you would ever want to hear, or perhaps you would never want to hear. Her answer about Jack was, God love him. Because it is very difficult, very hard to live with. Quite frankly, I don't know how my Aunt Cleo did it because 
Jack was just rough around the edges um, during his entire life. He had a daughter who ended up being a psychiatrist, by the way, my cousin Jackie. So my grandmother prayed constantly, but every night before bed, she took the time to make sure she was connecting with God in a way perhaps she hadn't had time to do during the day. Because she was busy taking care of Aunt Vera or Aunt Esther or Johnny when he was sick in, in their home with pancreatic cancer. She prayed to God that God would hear her. And she knew how much God loved her. She was in church every Sunday singing all the hymns out of that old black hymnal. She knew them all because she had spent her life in the church, coming to worship, going to Sunday school. If, if you go through the confirmation groups that they have in their parish hall there, they have this huge folder of all the pictures of confirmation groups. Her picture is in there from the early part of the 20th century as a young woman. And she stayed active in the church her entire life. The psalm meant everything to her. It helped to remind her of the power of God's love for her. When she may not have felt like things were going too well for her, she knew she had the love of God through Jesus Christ in her life. And she, she prayed this psalm fervently and I know when things got rough late in her life physically, I am sure she prayed, I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word, I hope. Because there comes a time in all of our lives when we lose hope in all kinds of other things. Financial resources may take a dive on us. Our health may not be real good. People we love may be sick, or we may have lost family or friends who have died. And we need to remember that we too are waiting for the fullness of God in Jesus Christ to be a part of our lives. Because we can't realize it all right now, folks. We see it in one another. We hold up one another in prayer just as I did at my echocardiogram for all of you. We try to take care of one another through our faith and in our spirituality that God has gifted us with. So we know about this waiting for the Lord. We know from the minute you're born, you're waiting. And in the church, we're waiting to know the fullness of God's love for us in his heavenly kingdom. When we take that last breath and our eyes are shut or gone and there's no more vision and we are welcomed into God's heavenly kingdom. It's not a time of darkness and despair for you and me and Jesus Christ. It's a time compared to our lives that is full of life and light and truth and love. As much as Melody and I love each other, we have our times. It's always her fault. Oh. <laughs> I'll pay for that one later today. Um, <laughs> no, that's just my pride and my ego speaking. <laughs> no, we have, we have some... Everybody who's married has those times in their life when things aren't exactly the way I want them. And that happens to us. The time that things are going to be perfect and just and great is that time when we get to be with God. And I expect my life partner, my wife, to be there so that we know who we are in God's heavenly kingdom. And we can rejoice in the fact that God granted us the gift of faith you know, I know, I know my grandmother's, my grandfather, John, was not a person of, a person of faith who would go to church to be a part of that. He kind of thought that was the women's thing. And indeed, in Lutheran churches over the years, 
It really was the women's thing. Women carried the churches. I mean, the men were on councils, but the women did all the work. You know, and, and still at that church, when my mother passed, we had a luncheon. And you know who it was who put on that luncheon. It was all women over 70. And they fed about 300 people. So, yes, women need to understand your, your role in the church community has been Im not just important, but crucial to the passing on of faith, to the carrying on of the certainty of love in Jesus Christ that we show by how we treat others around us. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. And that's so important to the psalmist that the psalmist says it again. More than those who wait for the morning. More than the night guard who's, who's on the wall in the precipice of the city watching for the enemies to come. Who is just hoping the morning will come so they can have an opportunity to rest. More than those people. More than my dad who worked midnight shifts for Dow Chemical for years and years and years and who wanted to come home and do nothing more than collapse in bed for three or four hours to get rested up. More than that. More excitement than that about going to bed and getting caught up rest-wise. No, it is the excitement which is beyond understanding as we wait for the entrance of Christ into our very lives. Some of that happens today. You know, sometimes we come up to communion and we act like, oh, I'm here again this week. I listen to the pastor talk too long. It's probably too long now. Now you know why I don't wear watches. I have to figure out what I'm... Melody takes care of that for me. She'll yell at me. Well, she won't yell. She'll seriously indicate that my message was too long. And I'll say, but I had so much more to say. It's important for us to remember the people of faith who have come before us and gone, gone on to be a part of God's heavenly kingdom. They were so crucial and critical to the life of this congregation and the gift of faith which you and I know in our lives. For me, that was my grandma. I sat with her at church all the time. And she did know before she died that Melody and I were headed off to seminary for me to be ordained. Claire was my second mother. Only babysitter I ever knew. My parents went on vacation, didn't want the kids with them. With them. My grandmother came and lived in the house, prepared meals for us, took care of us, did the laundry. That was how I knew her so well beyond the church. But she left a lasting example of how strong her faith was, how willing she was in her life to turn to Christ constantly how she was waiting to have that opportunity to open her eyes that one more time and have Christ standing before her. We need to know that in our lives. The world is so full of other things today. There are so many opportunities to fill our time every moment. We need to understand in our lives that those who have gone before us indeed knew what it took to be faithful, what it took to ask for greater faith, what it took to know the love of Christ in their lives through a time of depression in this country and then to move right into a world war and to watch their siblings and their, their parents head off to die in Europe or in the Pacific Theater. They knew all of that in their lives. 
And yet, every night, my grandmother turned, not in discouragement, but in the promise of Jesus Christ. She turned to God every night in faith, telling God she knew how much she was loved. That's true for you and me too. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. But you have really wonderful examples of the faith of people who have trusted you over centuries and centuries and centuries of time. Remind us, Lord, to pick up our Bible at home, to read the, the 30th Psalm every night, to remind us of the power of your love for our lives and the fact that in this life, Part of what we are doing is waiting for your loving presence to take us to our eternal uh, joy and life in the midst of your truth and light in Jesus Christ and your heavenly kingdom. Help us to know that those who have gone before us will be there to be with us. That is your promise for us. And that we will all live in this light of Christ. And it will be a glorious and wonderful time better than we can even begin to understand now. Be with us as we live this life, helping us to be faithful, more and more faithful every day. But help to prepare our hearts and minds too to be received by you into your heavenly kingdom. Help us to wait with patience and joy. And help us to celebrate the way in which you forgive those who are faithful in the way in which you guide our lives through your spirit. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we offer a prayer of thanksgiving. Uh, Holly's cardiac checkup and the x-ray was negative. Her heart is in really good shape and we give you thanks for that in her life. And thanks to you. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we pray for Holly's uh, niece, Kelly. Uh, she's been working as a youth director at Lutheran Church in Mora, Minnesota for a number of years. And she's been accepted for a full scholarship to study for ordained ministry at Wartburg Seminary in Iowa. We pray that you'll be with uh, Kelly. We thank you for the gift to cover the costs of her education. We thank you that she's able to keep her regular full-time job to make ends meet. And we pray that you'll be with her as she moves uh, forward in her work in the seminary. Um, this will help her perhaps move into youth directing or it may aim her towards ordination. But we thank you for giving her the faith to trust you for these opportunities that have been ma made available to her. Hear us, O oh God. Amen. 
Gracious Lord, we pray for Annette's boyfriend, Steve. He has some surgery coming up. We pray you'll be with him to give him your confidence. We pray that you'll be with Steve and, and uh, his family too, as his mother struggles in her life. She's in her 90s and her health is deteriorating. We pray that you'll be with her to bring her calm and peace in her life. We also pray for safety for Annette and Steve, who will be traveling to California for a brief stay over there over the holiday week. Be with them to keep them safe in their journeys and bring them home safely. We pray for Annette, too, for her knees and her shoulder, that you'll be in the midst of the care the doctors are going to give her so that she might find relief from pain and healing. And be with her as she goes through her MRI this week helping her to be confident in, in, in the test and to know that it's a non-invasive test which will be easy for her to do. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we pray for our son Josh and his wife Shannon. They're coming down for Father's Day uh, to, to see our family and to be with Shannon's family. Her dad is suffering with uh, terminal cancer. We pray that you'll be with them as they travel and journey. We pray for them too, that they might go find work. Right now, they're both unemployed. So be with them to help them find meaningful employment for them. We pray for Nicole and her family on the death of Nicole's mother, her birth mother. We pray that you'll be with them in the midst of trying to understand uh, how this uh, all took place and, and being thankful, especially for Nicole, for the gift of life she received from her birth mother. We pray too for the war in the Ukraine and for the war in Palestine. We pray that you will move people's hearts to be more generous, to seek peace through loving kindness and gentleness. Um, and right now in that area, those areas of the world, that's not the kind of thing which has happened. There's a lot of building anger and frustration and we pray that somehow your Son and Spirit might break into those situations to cool them off and to help people find peace with one another. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is Gracious Lord, we pray for Joanna's cousin Kathleen, who is really struggling now, and she was evicted from her home Monday. Um, we pray that you'll help her get back on her feet, Lord. And we offer a prayer of thanksgiving for Kathleen's friend who is letting her stay with her for the time being. We pray that you'll help Kathleen make the choices and decisions in her life which will not only be more appropriate for her, but helpful. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we offer you prayer of thanksgiving uh, that Letitia got uh, the full value of her wrecked car from the accident she was in. And she's been able to find a, a used car that will meet her needs. We thank you for that. And we thank you for keeping Letitia safe in that accident. She's had some back injury problems and full muscles. And we pray that you'll help those uh, get straightened out for her. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is All these things we pray in the name of your Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we might know that we are waiting for his loving presence to lift us to your heavenly kingdom, and that we might have confidence in this life of the power of his presence with us. In his name we pray. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Please greet one another with the peace of the Lord. Prepare ourselves to receive uh, the sacrament of Holy Communion, which is the living presence of Jesus Christ for our lives. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer, Lord, who taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please come and receive the sacrament of our Lord.
face to shine upon you with grace and with mercy. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.